G'day mates, ResMed EPR, or expiratory pressure relief, is a powerful therapy setting masquerading as a comfort setting. It was originally developed to make breathing easier by reducing pressure delivery during exhalation. However, what ResMed conveniently fails to mention is it dramatically reduces apnea control, unlike pressure relief technology found on some other devices. Let's take a look. Back in 2016, researchers from France studied the relationship between pressure relief and apnea treatment. And what they found is when EPR is turned on, a subsequent pressure increase is required to achieve the same apnea control versus when EPR is off. That is, if you want to turn EPR on, you need to increase the pressure to achieve the same apnea control. Let me break it down for you. So this chart here, shows the pressure required for apnea control with and without EPR. So along the X axis, no EPR, conventional CPAP, and along the Y axis, EPR on level three. Now let's say the prescribed pressure for you is 12 centimeters with no EPR. Here it is here, 12 centimeters, that's the pressure required. If we turn on EPR to a level of three, the pressure required for apnea control is now up here, around 14. This is the difference here. Now, I know what you're thinking, guys. Isn't the whole point of EPR to reduce the pressure? Yes, it is. However, with ResMed EPR, you cannot have your cake and eat it too. You can't increase comfort with EPR without reducing apnea control. It can't be done. However, what's fascinating is these researchers also took a look at some pressure relief technology from other companies, and the results are very interesting. Let's take a look. So this here is the exact same pressure relief chart, but this time from a German company, Lutenstein, and I'm terrible at pronouncing that, but I'm giving it a try anyway, and their soft pap pressure relief. And what we can see here is the pressure required for apnea control with conventional CPAP, no pressure relief, is very similar to that with soft pap on two and three. I'll add in the line. Here we go again. So here's 12. You can see the lines here, this little gray line here that runs right from here to here, the thin gray line. This is the conventional CPAP pressure required. And then we've got the black line and the red dotted line. But you can see the lines are very, very close together. So 12 centimeters with conventional CPAP, no pressure relief is the same. You can see it matches up 12 centimeters with pressure relief. So you can have your cake and eat it too. You can have soft pap on two and three, and you don't have to adjust that CPAP pressure higher to account for that like you do with EPR. And let's take a look also at the Philips Respironics and their C-Flex pressure relief. Okay, once again, the same chart, lines very close together, and you can see 12 centimeters with conventional CPAP, no pressure relief is pretty much lining up with 12 centimeters with C-Flex on three. With C-Flex plus on three, you can see the dotted line here, you need just a little bit extra pressure when you add that pressure relief, but very, very good. So I guess the question is, how can these companies do it? How can they have pressure relief but still maintain apnea control? And ResMed can't. Let me show you. So to start, let's take a look at these two ResMed charts over here and the changes that take place when we turn on APR because this is what's causing the problems. And there's two charts. We have airflow, think of this as Inhalation, air moving into your lungs up here, and exhalation, air moving out of your lungs, liters per minute, and also mask pressure, the pressure inside the mask here. And we've got this gray line here. This is with EPR turned off, and the red line is when we turn it on, and this is the change that takes place. So what we can see here is when we turn on EPR during inhalation, there's a lot more airflow. See the red line? 
well above the gray line here. And we won't go into it in this video, but I believe that this is possibly the reason why people see improved flow limitation results on their sleep HQ charts with EPR on three. I think this extra airflow, think of it like water rushing down a river. And the airflow limitation is like branches on the side of the river, trees that have fallen down in storms. And all of a sudden we get a surge of flow, a surge of water, and what does it do? It just pushes everything out of the way. And I think that's what's happening here. I could be wrong, of course. And then there's not much of a difference during exhalation. But come down to the pressure, the mass pressure chart, and this is the big problem right here. And we'll compare it with uh, soft pap and C flex. So with no EPR, the gray line, the pressure inside the mask is very static, very stable. You can see it here. But when we turn on EPR, we get these big swings in pressure right here. This is the start of expiration and the pressure inside the mask falls off a cliff. That's what it's designed to do. Expiratory pressure relief. This is the pressure dropping at the start of expiration. And then it stays very, 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 very low. All right, expiration is finished. You start to breathe in again, and then the pressure rushes up again, back to the baseline. And that's that increase in airflow. This is that big rush from low pressure to high pressure. Now let's compare that with soft pap three and C flex. Now there's not a huge difference in the airflow chart. However, a mass pressure, that's where the secret source is. Let's take a look. Now, unlike the ResMed that drops down and then stays low right through to the end of expiration and the start of breathing in, look at the soft pap here. It drops down, just like the ResMed, it drops down, provides the pressure relief, but it instantly starts to rise back up. So by the time we get to that end of expiration, the pressure is back up to the baseline. See with the ResMed here, it doesn't start to rise back up until after, there's the end of expiration here, there's the start of inhalation, you can see it starts to rise right here. So expiration is finished with ResMed, whereas with soft pap and also C-Flex, you can see it drops down but then starts to rise back up again so before inhalation starts, it's already back up to baseline. This here is the secret source. This is the secret. This is how they do it. Okay, so what you guys need to understand right now, and it's super important, is apneas begin with the narrowing of the upper airway at the end of expiration. Yes, and then you breathe in and you get the respiratory effort and the ensuing collapse, but it's at the end of expiration when we first get the narrowing of the upper airway. And because of this, it's critical that the pressure returns to optimal levels prior to the beginning of inspiration. And that's the problem with the ResMed EPR. Okay, you can see it drops down and the pressure doesn't return until after expiration. It rushes straight back up. But with soft pap and C-Flex, after the initial drop, the pressure returns to baseline, returns to the optimal levels prior to inspiration. And as such, that EPAP, that expiratory positive airway pressure, it just holds everything open. It stops the initial narrowing. If you wait until after exhalation, it's too late. You've missed the boat, and that's why you need to increase the CPAP pressure with ResMed when you use EPR, but with these two. You don't because the pressure has already returned up to baseline prior to the end of expiration. And that's the difference right there. That's the secret source. Now to all the clinicians and the consultants and the doctors watching, I want you to take my education and I want you to put it to good use with your patients. You'll get much better apnea control if you switch your focus from IPAP to EPAP. For example, let's just say old mate Bob comes for a checkup. He's on a pressure of 10, EPR on three. You look at his report and his AHI is 10. 
realistically probably more like 20 if you added up all the missed events right now 99.9% .9 of you are reaching for that iPad button you're grabbing Bob's machine and you're cranking up the pressure 11 12 13 centimeters but as a result all you're doing is you're just increasing the airflow you're increasing the mass leaks and you're increasing all the side effects for poor old Bobby boy instead try reducing EPR you'll increase EPAP as a result, which improves apnea control without the high inspiratory flow and associated problems. I refer to EPR as Pandora's box. There's just so many ways it can completely change your therapy for better or for worse. Here's an email I got from Jewett. Hi Nick, last week I replaced my ResMed AirSense 10 with the new AirSense 11. Despite the same settings, my data on Sleep HQ looks completely different. Let's take a look. So I'm on Sleep HQ and I'm comparing Duet's results from his AirSense 10 to his AirSense 11, and sure enough, they're completely different. And I'm racking my brain, going out of my mind, trying to figure out what the bloody hell is going on. And then I spot the difference EPR. Here's the AirSense 10, EPR is off. Remember that it's off, no APR, no pressure relief. Let's check out some of the stats. Median pressure delivery over the night, 12. And very high leak rates, 37.2. Apnea hypopnea index, 1.71. Let's check out the AirSense 11 now. He switches APR on. Here's the AirSense 11. APR, level of two, full time. And check this out, median pressure delivery, 10. It's dropped 20%. Leak rates, they're much better too. And apnea hypopnea index, 0.0. .0. So these results are much better with EPR on a level of two. Why? What change happened here? This is the Pandora box I'm talking about, guys. And this is what's so great about Sleep HQ because you can get in here you can change some settings. You can try EPR on zero. You can try it on three and you can see what effect it has to your therapy results. So what happened is this. We'll go back to the AirSense 10. Come down here. Check this out. You can see here the flow limitation. This is airflow limitation. It's upper airway restriction. They don't quite meet the criteria of a destructive event, a hypopnea and so on but there's a bit of resistance going on in his upper airway and you can see it here with all the green. And here's all these leak rates. Now what the AirSense 10 is doing here, it's adjusting the pressure higher as a result of the airflow limitation. This is why his medium pressure is 20% higher, all right? The automatic pressure is increasing due to that airflow limitation and as a result, it's causing a lot more leaks as well, yeah? higher airflow, higher leaks. Now, when he switches EPR on, Pandora's box, look at, the, look at the flow limitation now. It's completely gone, well, almost. And that's what I said before, yeah? When we looked at the chart, the airflow chart, and how switching EPR on produced more inhalation flow. Remember my river metaphor? Pushing all the sticks aside, pushing that, pushing away the fallen trees. That's what's happened. Now, because this airflow limitation trace is better, there's less pressure required. And as a result, his leak rates are lower as well. So in this scenario right here, turning EPR on has been a blessing, perhaps in disguise. It reduced the airflow limitation, which reduced the automatic pressure delivery, which reduced the mass leaks, leading to a more comfortable night with better results. Pandora's box. The take home message from today's video is this. Not all pressure relief features are made equal. ResMed's EPR is a Pandora's box. So if you decide to open it up, jump on Sleep HQ, it's free to use, and you can see for yourself what effect it has on your therapy. Until next time guys, sleep well, look after your mates, and happy Mother's Day. Love you, mum. Cheers.